Welcome to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX and online at MyWithersRadio.com featuring the Waltonville Spartans, Weber Township Trojans, and Woodlawn Cardinals. The Jefferson County Basketball Showcase is presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. The Jefferson County Basketball Showcase is also sponsored in part by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. The Collision Pros at Cesar Auto Body, Newell Furniture, and the General Store in Woodlawn. Red Lake College. It's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu. And by Coach House Garages, Ford Square, King City Chrysler. You can count on us. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. State Farm agent Scott Owens. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And People's National Bank. With the Coach House Garage's pregame show, the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase starts now. Welcome into Goreville High School as the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase presents the Cesar Valera Walsonville Lady Devils at the Goreville Lady Blackheads. A very pleasant Monday evening, wherever you may be, listening in on WMIX 94.1 FM as well as MyWithersRadio.com. I'm Danny Zoyska. I'll be bringing you the play by play of this game. Also joining me alongside just a minute is the voice of Mount Vernon Athletics on WMIX, Chris Hugo. This is Coach House Garage's pregame show. If you're in need of a garage to protect your car or prize possessions, Coach House Garages has a building for you. Call Daryl Sheridan at 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. Goreville and Cesar Valera Park 2. We have made the journey to Johnson County. And, Chris, a uh, matchup we saw in January on the 11th, an overtime four-point win for Goreville. Big atmosphere tonight, senior night, the band's here, kids piling in. What a great time, great facility we are involved with here tonight in this ballgame. Oh, it definitely is. In fact, I was just looking through my books that I don't have here to see what the score was from that last one because it was so close. 54-50. Actually, was going back through our Twitter and uh, Facebook archives to check yeah. that out as well. But, yeah, I forgot the old bag tonight, but uh, thankfully this is a great place to be, a, a nice gymnasium, first time I've ever been able to make the trip down here to this beautiful building in Johnson County, and what I love about it is just they have the four seating, four-sided seating, so they're seating all around the gymnasium. It's not your bowl style like a Heron or a Pickneyville or a Trico or an El Dorado, but still, gives you that atmosphere of people surrounding the floor, and I think that's what's important in this day and age. The atmosphere is huge here tonight. As Chris mentioned, there are chair seats on our side. We're sitting on the Gorgo side, actually. Four rows of chair seats and then two rows of bleachers on the home side. On the visitor's side, there are six rows of the newer style bleachers with the benches and the scores table. And then in the end zone, you have a couple sets of bleachers that run, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine high on each side. So around the atmosphere, and I can imagine when they have a Vienna, Meridian, or otherwise coming here, a rival or a conference game, this place can rattle out some atmosphere because this gym's loud just now. Oh, it is. I mean, they have the band here tonight, too, as well. So that just adds to the atmosphere. Here on the senior night in Goreville, where these they are number one in their regional, the Goreville Lady Black Cats, of course, it's hard to believe that this is the last week of the regular season for 1A and 2A girls basketball. It is the last week. Before we go on, and we have made our trip down here to Goreville tonight, look forward to this trip since we put it on the calendar, and we would like to say a very special thanks to Athletic Director Todd Tripp, who welcomed us in, got us help here. Also, baseball coach Sean Tripp who brought us some food, and, of course, Ann Gray. I know you're listening back there in the back while you're getting this food out to people and selling it. Tremendous Sloppy Joe sandwich that Chris and I are eating. If my, or my mom ate. and fiancé aren't listening, it's yeah. the best batch of Sloppy Joes I've ever had. If they are listening, it's still pretty good. It's but uh, It is the good. best. They are the best I've ever had. This is pretty darn good sloppy joe that we just had here at Goreville. We appreciate all the kindness and everything that we've gotten here tonight. It has a brown sugary, maybe a vinegar sauce type base feel to it and a little bit of kick to it as well, yep. which is what sets it apart in the flavor department. And we, <laughs> astonishing. with that, so we can get a few more bites in, we need to step out for our first break here in the Coach House Garage this three games. Now, when we come back, we'll change topics. We'll get off the food and the drink and hospitality from Goreville. We love it very much and look forward to coming back more. But we'll get into more on this game and this matchup between Goreville and Setzer Blair Waltville here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. 
craftsmanship that's sure to get compliments. Don't cut corners on your garage. It adds value to your home. That's why you need to see the professionals at Coach House Garages. Choose from a variety of Coach House Garage designs, or they'll build one to your design. For a dealer near you, check the yellow pages in Mount Vernon, or go online to coachhousegarages.com. More than just a garage. More than just a garage. It's a Coach House. If your definition of local is southern Illinois and adjacent states, pay no attention to this message. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. Others advertise the message of being a local community bank. However, Community First Bank is the only local community bank exclusively serving Jefferson County with five locations and five ATMs. In short, loans and deposits stay local and benefit you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ida. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Law. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. This is 50,000 Watts of the Showcase on 94.1 FM WMIX. Mount Vernon, Marion, Effingham. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. Welcome back to Goreville High School, the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. This is the Coach House Garage, this free game show. If you're looking for a garage builder to build a quality garage at a fair price, with a five-year written warranty and financing available, then a Coach House Garage is for you. Call Daryl Sheridan at 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. Your food food critic, Danny Zwinski and Chris Hugo, also here to do basketball. And first off, we'll have a scoreboard update. Yeah, that'll that interest uh, the yeah. Jefferson County side of the listener base. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that scoreboard update here in just a moment. We don't want to take away from the game in front of us. First off, Chris, the Goreville Lady Blackheads, 23-2 and overall, 8-0 in the conference. You win this one, they win this one, they win their conference champs. Nobody can catch them. Only Session Miller Waltonville can. That would be a tie. 23 and 2. Only losses this year to Vianna and Hamilton County at the El Dorado Tournament. Vianna was earlier in the year. So this team rolling again in lead eight appearance last year. And Mike Helton's team looks like the team to beat out of Southern Illinois as far as getting out of the Salem Super. Well, and they are at this point. You look at their regional. It's here right here at Goreville. They're the one seed. Uh, Century the two, Shawnee is the three, Cobb is the four, Dongola is the five, and Egyptian the six. So you're looking at a possible Cobb or Dongola uh, in their first game on Tuesday the seventh. That's actually a week from today. And then the regional championship, if they were able to get past that one, you have to assume by seeding they will. Uh, they would might be looking at, a, at probably a Century or a Shawnee, and really a, a favorite in that regional. And, and I don't want to just project them as the winners right now, but you'd have to think. But they're the odds-on favorite to win that, that regional probably by 10 or 20 points each game. You look at then at who they would face in a Gallatin County sectional, they would get the winner of, of North Clay sectional, which you go by seeds, maybe either a Red Hill or a North Clay. And having seen those teams this year, Danny, I don't know that they could play with, with the Goreville Lady Black Hats. And then you're looking at an impossible sectional championship game, the winner of the Wayne City Regional or the winner of the Polk County Regional which I would think might be the winner of the Wayne City Regional in that sectional championship game. And Again, I mean, it's just one of those where you think maybe a team from the Wayne City Regional could probably maybe give them a little bit of a fit. But we saw how that Central Valley Waltonville game went back earlier this month. and It just looks like the Goreville Lady Black Cats are poised for something great come late February. And the Goreville, with that experience, making that run last year to the Elite A, of course, getting beat by uh, well, that team up north that's rather good. Yeah, you look at Cowden, Herrick, Beecher City, Danny, and I mean, they, they won, I think they finished sixth, actually, at the Highland Tournament, falling to T-Town in the fifth-place game, but they gave Edwardsville a, a 4A school that is projected to go to that super sectional, go to that Elite Eight, uh, everything they wanted for about three quarters. So you you look at that experience coming down possibly to Salem Bar and the upset, and it projects nicely to a Cowden, Herrick, Beecher City, maybe a Goreville there coming from the south, and it certainly should be interesting in Salem. Well, it should be interesting. In Salem, a great atmosphere for a super sectional. Of course, you and I have seen that the last couple of years there. And as I look at it, as you did, you know, Goreville hosting a regional next week, they should win it hands down. And then, of course, it, you know, when you look at the sectional and you look through at Gallatin County, you know, I'll tell you what, just thinking about it this way, if I'm North Clay and North Clay or Red Hill's got a good chance to win, they're going to have to – get after it, mileage-wise, to get to Gallatin County. Right. Great facility Gallatin County, but that's a long drive. That's going to play too well because Goreville will drive across to Gallatin County has the advantage of having played there already. Sure. So you do have like a Goreville, maybe a Red Hill or North Clay matchup there in the Gallatin County sectional championship. And we're not discounting Wayne City or Woodlawn 
or Christar Rock or Weber Township or Glacier Edwards County, all of them in the listing area. So might as well just said the entire regional. But, you know, when you, when you look at the favorite Goreville team going rolling through 1A and, you know, taking the Wayne City Regional out of the equation, actually most of the regionals are in our listing area. So not to offend anybody, but looking at how the games have been played thus far this year, obviously they, they play the games for a reason. But you certainly have to give Goreville the edge right now with the experience and the talent they had that returned this year. Well, we're going to take another break here in the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on the Coach House Prize Garage and Street Game Show. We'll come back and we'll talk about the Sester Valera Waltonville Lady Devils and, of course, this matchup here tonight. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Don't miss the final days of the huge winter cleanup sale at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 80% off Christmas and winter decor, 30 to 60% off clearance items, and 10 to 15% off everything else, including your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Hill, Broy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of home decor, wall decor, ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. It's the huge winter cleanup at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get PNB to go mobile banking now at People's National Bank. Hi, this is Monica Wilt, relationship banker at People's National Bank. With PNB to go mobile banking, check your balances, see transaction activity, transfer between accounts, and pay bills all from your mobile phone. PNB to go mobile banking makes banking even more convenient. People's National Bank, making your life easier since 1909. People's National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Sester Auto Body would like to take a moment to remind everyone driving to and from the game to drive safe and be alert. Sometimes events happen beyond your control. When it does, take your vehicle to the collision pros. Sester Auto Body is pre-approved by most insurance companies throughout Southern Illinois. This allows them to get the parts ordered quicker, getting you back on the road faster and in showroom condition. Sesser Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sesser, or call 625-3523. That's 625-3523. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Goreville High School. The Coach House Garage is pregame show. If you're in need of a garage to protect your prized possessions, Coach House Garage has the building for you. Call Daryl Sheridan at 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. The back here at Goreville with Danny Fuentes and Chris Hugo alongside the Goreville seniors. Lady Cats are being honored and introduced to the crowd here. And are receiving a standing ovation about three-fourths of the gym from the student body. The fans wrapped around are receiving their ovation from their fans. And now we expect the starting lineup and first the national anthem. So we'll tell our engineer at the studio, Jesse Clark, to be on their, her toes because we expect that there will be the anthem first. That's what we were told. Always a guessing game, however, even when you are told, because something can occasionally change at the table. Got to drop those yeah, flowers off. Give flowers to mom or dad or your legal guardian. Seniors taking their flowers to the respective adults. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do the sign of the National Anthem, so we're going to step out for the National Anthem and come back, start of the game and lineups. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Stick a reminder on your phone. Jot it down on the calendar or tie a string on your finger. Don't miss the Saturday Sports Show every week after the 8 o'clock news on AM 940 and MyWithersRadio.com. Scores, guests, content, networking, knowledge, the occasional argument, yada, yada, yada. We do it all. You might say we're a little versatile. It's the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and MyWithersRadio.com, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. Hey, this is Big Dave at All Stars and Stitches, located at 418 East Main Street, a half a block from the Benton High School. Our hours are Monday through Friday from 10 to 6 and Saturday 10 to 3. We provide custom screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, vehicle lettering, vehicle wraps. If you want it printed on, we probably do it. Hey, this is Coach Aaron. You're the big man. Big Dave a call at All Stars and Stitches. 435-555-555. 
by the way, what was that phone number again? 435-555-555. Hello, this is Hunt Bonin with People's National Bank. People's National Bank is proud to be a family-owned bank that has served Southern Illinois for over 100 years. We take pride in offering products that are customer convenient and friendly. With free checking, online banking, CD specials, mortgage products, and many other convenient banking services, we have everything to meet your banking needs. Stop by any People's National Bank and see what banking with a family-owned bank is all about. People's National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Well, we're still catching every game, just a lot more from uh, home than here in the stands, huh? Yeah, and when we do get to go, Dad says we got to bring our own peanuts and stuff. Looking for some extra ticket money this season? Let a State Farm agent do a free discount double check that could save you hundreds of dollars on car insurance. We'll always be there for this team, even when we can't actually be here. Visit Jefferson County State Farm agent Scott Owens at 1810 Broadway in Mount Vernon for a free discount double check. Just comes from very state to state. For more scores and insight, follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports. Now back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Goreville. People's National Bank presents your starting line at Stop by People's National Bank and let them remind you what bank of the local family owned bank is all about. Visit a branch near you or log on to peoplesnationalbank.com. People's National Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Mr. Hugo, you have the starting lineups for tonight's game. I do. First for the visiting Central Valera Waltonville Lady Red Devils tonight. They will go with number one, Ray Lappin. Number three, Chelsea Miller. Number 22, Megan Eskew. Number 40, Tasha Doerr. And number 42, Rachel Marlowe. And, of course, the Red Devils are coached by Rick Metcalf, assisted by Craig Garner and Emily Metcalf. Let's go ahead and meet the Goreville Lady Black Cats while Matt is on senior night. Coached by Mike Helton, they will be led by number 10, the 1,000-point scoring Shelby Miller. Number 15, another guard, Jessica Wright. Yet another guard, number one, or excuse me, number 33, Brianna Pyle. Another senior also in the lineup of forward tonight, number 34, Madison Cavan. And number 45, another guard, also a senior, Tiffany Shadow. Those starting lineups brought to you by People's National Bank. Have instant access to your account anytime, anywhere with online banking. From People's National Bank, log on to peoplesnationalbank.com, member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. We'll get this scoreboard update out of the way. Some of you might be interested to know at the halftime of the Waltonville Boys Class S Regional Tonight Championship, Woodlawn leads Waltonville 36-33 at the half. Winner of that game will advance to Rin Lake College on Saturday in the Class S State Tournament. That scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. Dedicated to helping you get the right coverage and discounts you deserve. Give Scott Owens a call. 242-3770, like a good neighbor. Scott Owens is there. Will the game two replicate game one? We will find out in the next hour and 45 minutes. The officials step into the center circle. Ball tipped up, controlled by the Lady Red Devil. Miller will bring it across the timeline. It's man-to-man by Goreville, as expected, to lap it back to Miller's half the key. Miller right side to Eskew. Dribbles right wing, picks up her dribble to Marlowe. Elbows a high load with door. Door underneath, double team, kicks it back out, right corner, SQ shot, no good off the mark. Rebound and tip to the floor, Lappin had it, lost that out of bounds, it'll go to Goreville on their first possession. If you're tired of big corporate banking, you have a choice in Jefferson County. Community First Bank is at home in Dix, Ina, Woodlawn, and Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Goreville at 23-2, and two, state rank, brings it across the floor for their first possession. Pass in the corner to Cabins, it goes off her hands out of bounds. Maybe a case of the nerves here on senior night. It always gets a little, you know, you really think about this being your final game at home. Obviously, in the regular season since the whole on regional. Kind of gets you a little bit. Big student section behind the goal here to our right. They lob it in the door, and that'll be a foul. So a team foul is going to go to Goreville here. While they do that, we'll let you know you can follow us on Twitter at 94sports or go to our Facebook page, WMIX Sports. Lots of information free to the public for viewing. If you're on that Facebook page at WMI Exports, you can like us there as well. Sets your inbounds, ask you to door, shot, miss, fall to the ground. It'll be an over-the-back foul on the Lady Devils, who all verticality breached. And that foul is on Rachel Martle, her first team's first. Just to clarify, and of course, as you were alluding to, you do not have to be on Facebook, on Facebook to see our page. Just go to Facebook.com slash WMI Exports. We just put it out there. We Same put, for Twitter. Yeah. Twitter.com. Yes. Yeah. We put information out there, scores, schedules, updates of games we do, different places. we got pictures of tonight going up on our Twitter account. Ball stolen away by Miller. The other way for the Lady Red Devils. She drives past her man, pulls up foul from behind. Madison Cavins picks up her first team second, and Chelsea Miller will line shoot two. 
thing you mentioned all around on that point you mentioned about senior night, Chris, it's a bittersweet night. you got a lot of emotion out of some seniors playing their final regular season home game. Yeah, they have a regional next week. But you have that emotion of a, a, a game to take care of, but yet you're still wound up because knowing all the time and hours you put in this in this gymnasium. Exactly, and I think they did it the right way. Not They they honored their seniors. They didn't really bring the parents out or anything so that they wouldn't make too much of a big deal about it on a big game night. Miller misses both free throws. Marlowe gets the rebound, kicks to Miller in the right corner. Back the door on the right block to well, Miller. She's in traffic, dribbles out, throws it left block. Marlowe, shot no good in the foul. Lady Devils hitting the glass early. That's the third team foul on the Lady Cats. What a wonderful scoreboard here. That's the second foul on Rhiannon Pyle. That'll be her second. She'll come out as number 12, Allison Webb, will come in. She had a big game at Cesar Malera yeah. back on January 11th. Who in that company donated the scoreboard? They've been busy giving the on the floor. Yeah, great school. A scoreboard here. Very nice one over across the way in Johnson County at Vienna High School. A nice Jack Hewitt scoreboard as well. Same kind, gives the score, player fouls, team fouls, and points and fouls for each individual player on the floor at that time. As Marlowe hits both free throws, it is two to nothing. Lady Devils, they take the first basket and first point of this big game. Winner gets the Black Diamond. Cesar Valer Waltonville looking for a tie. If Warville wins, it's to them outright. Screen on the play, that's Shadowins with it. Throws it right wing to Miller. Miller just got her thousandth point in her career last week. Throws it left side to right. Right drives right to left side. Glass good. Jessica Wright scores off the glass. And we're tied up at two. Lappin has it in the right corner from Miller. Lappin skipped past SQ top of the key. Now left wing pass Marlowe. Marlowe drives left side. Running one hander off the glass. No good. Over the back foul. Lappin, her first team second. Rebound to Goreville. Both teams kind of playing with that nervous energy here to start with. Ice cold from the field are the Lady Devils as they are 4 6 Remember, we will pick a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one is over. Crossroads Community Hospital is more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Lady Black Cats have the basketball. That's Shadowins leaves it off for Miller. Miller will go off the screen. That's Shelby Miller for Scoreville. She'll hold guarded by lap and now gives to a cutting right down the lane. She goes off glass and in. Jessica Wright's a little lefty, and boy, she is smooth and getting open with that left hand. A couple of nice runners off the window, too. Knows where to put it, knows how to make it fall, knows how to score here for the Black Cats. Marlowe on the left side. Now throws it out top of the key to Miller, by right side to SQ. SQ lob pass door in the block. Triple team back to SQ. SQ skips to Marlowe, left elbow. Back out to Miller, top of the key against the man to man. Miller comes down the lane, loses it out of bounds. It was off the of Lady Black Cat, and it was long to the Lady Devils. Give the Black Cats a lot of credit in the paint, Danny. They really know how to defend against the lob. This is a lot in the JV game, and they're certainly doing it here in the varsity game, keeping the Lady Devils at bay. Marlowe gets the inbounds pass from SQ to Miller, and out of SQ on the right side. They lob in the top over the door and score. Lob top pass over the door. No help side defense. It's four all. Quickly, Miller comes the other way for Goreville to the left wing on the dribble. Between the legs, now goes to the right side. She's going to go down the lane. She's going to try to throw underneath. It's going to be tipped and pulled to the floor. Bodies down. One white jersey, one maroon jersey. And that foul is going to be on number 12, Allison Webb. Her first team sport. Had been choppy early on by both teams. Two teams right now with 42 wins between them. Not shabby. Cesar Valir in Waltonville, the number two seed in the Heron Regional next week. You look at one of the common opponents, Hamilton County. Lady Devils beat him back in December, and Goreville just fell to them a couple weeks ago. Yes. Miller with it. Now lob inside door underneath. Shot good. Cesar Valir is making an adjustment defensively. Goreville not giving help side defense. Front the post guy, and there's nothing coming behind. Cesar Valir, Waltonville lobbing over the top. Miller with it. Dribbles to the right side for Goreville. Leaves it in the corner. For Shadowin. Shadowin's out top of the key to Haley. He's checked in her three on the way. Good. Darnell Haley. It's a three. It's seven to six. Goreville by one. In the corner is Marlowe. Goes baseline. Picks up her dribble. Double team back out to Lappin. To door right wing to SQ. SQ goes top of the key to Miller. Miller will come off the dribble. Now cross between her legs. Leaves her to the defender. Shot from the right elbow. No good in the foul. Shelby Miller picks up her first. He's fifth. And I think you're Mike Hilton right now. You've got to be concerned, Chris. Five fouls in the first half of this first quarter. Well, and it's so early. We're not even midway through the first quarter. We're close. But you're looking at a point now. Two of four from the line are the Devils. Have to start making those because it looks as if 
Orville's going to be in foul trouble. Links this first quarter. We're our session. Valera misses another free throw right now. They'll have Miller or Lapp will have another. Your community, your choice, your bank with five locations and friends and neighbors on staff who understand your needs. Community First Bank keeps it simple. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FBIC. Miller misses the free throw again. And said that Gorville has the rebound. Haley across the timeline throws the right side to Miller. Miller has it. Number 10 and wide for Goreville. Drives on Lappin. Still dribbling. Now will go to the top of the key. Leaves it left side for Haley who comes to the free throw lane. They try to pick and roll underneath with Webb. And it goes off her hands out of bounds. And it'll go to the Lady Devil. Miller will bring it up across the timeline for the Lady Devils. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. 7-6. Goreville on top. BDC West battle on the line. Here's a three from Miller in the right corner. It's off the iron. Rolls to the floor, and that'll be a foul on Lappin. And that's two on Lappin. She was a breaking law of verticality, so that means number 35, Michaela Williams, will come in. And that's a huge blow for the Lady Devils right now this early in the game. Oh, it is. And they've really had an eye on her defensively, having the Goreville Black Hats now get her into early foul trouble. And so playing right into their hands defensively, especially with the fact that outside of a couple lobs over the top, no success from the floor yet for the Lady Devils. Here comes Orville. Left side, left wing pass to Haley. She'll dribble to the top of the key. Throws in the right corner to Shadow. And Shadow and goes base on Eskew. Tries to bounce it across the lane. Picked off by Chelsea Miller of Central Miller Waltville. Miller brings it up into the front court. Tries to go left block to Williams. It was tipped out of bounds by Orville. And the Lady Devils will keep the basketball. Cabins will check back in with her one foul. And Shadow will check out for Orville. Lady Devils will inbound right in front of the student section. That's SQ throwing the right corner. Williams, her three on the way. No good. Rebound to Marlowe, weak side. Can't do anything with it to SQ. SQ will have to get it to Miller, and the Lady Devils will reset. SQ to Williams, right corner. Now goes right baseline. Step in one dribble. Shot good. Michaela Williams gets on the board. Her first points, 8-7. Lady Devils by one. Quickly, Goreville the other way. Lamb off the glass. No good. Marlowe with the rebound after the one pass, one shot for Goreville. Miller up the left side of the floor. Throws it to SQ now to Dorr, now to Miller, left wing. SQ left corner, shot good. Megan SQ knocks down another jumper. It's 10 7. Lady Devils on a 4 0 run. Quickly the other way is right down the lane, leaves it for Haley. Haley picks up her dribble. Ball kicked off Haley's leg, out of bounds, and it'll go to the Lady Devils. Very good start here for the Lady Devils on the road. That's three turnovers now for the Black Cats. Probably a good time to get a timeout here, talk some things over. Nice little run for the Lady Devils here. They're up 10 to 7. Mike Helton wants a timeout. His team is Chris Bed down 10 to 7. We'll remind you of familiar faces, new places. Bank with Ray and Bria, Community First Bank's new 42nd Street location in Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. And Chris, you see some of this sometimes with senior nights. Teams start out struggling, start out slow, and maybe a little nerves, little emotion over there on those white and black and old jerseys. Can't get through that senior night emotion yet. Well, and once you do, you start to finally realize, I'm sure they're going over this in the huddle, that it's a special night, but it's not any different than the other night here in this gymnasium. It's just the last night of four years of hard work in this gym, and you have to kind of check that at the bench and try to come out and still play your ball game and run those offensive sets and try to do something defensively so they'll take that lob play away. As we have a little delay on the floor, there was some water dropped on the floor for Goreville in front of their bench, so... I got officials going to clean that up. I kind of feel like on the couple of lobs that I gave them the radio jinx because they had successfully defended it the first few plays of the game and then the, most of the JV game, and then it kind of came a susceptibility after that. Well, and then the varsity team, the Lady Devils, have really taken advantage of the over-the-top lob. Now we'll see if the defense changes. Goreville goes known out of the timeout. Miller to Eskew on the right wing. To Marlowe at the right elbow. Skip past Williams, left side. Williams, one shot, one dribble, shot up, no good. Rebounded by Goreville, weak side. That is... Cabins. Cabins gets it up to Miller. She quickly comes down the lane, running one hander off the glass and in. Coast to coast goes Shelby Miller for her first two points after breaking 1,000 last week in her career. Marlowe on the left baseline from Miller. Marlowe kicks it back out to Williams' left corner, 17 footer short. Eskew on the rebound up and in. Eskew in the right place, right time, scores, much to the chagrin of the airball chance of the Goreville student section. Miller on the right wing for Goreville. Pulls back out deep behind the three point line. Get past left wing. That is Cavins. Cavins now kicks it out top three ball on the way from Haley. Hits the front of the iron. Drops down. Does not go in. Goes to the floor. That foul is on number 40. Tasha Storr. That'll be her first team sport. Here comes Shadowins back in the game. Going out is Haley. 
Goreville only dressing 10 tonight. Six, now they accept six and 10, so they're only dressing 11. Touch the floor with a compliment of 12. Top of the key, Goreville off the out of bounds pass from under their goal. Down the left side goes right, glass no good. Got a shot off, Williams gets the rebound for the Lady Devils. Up to Chelsea Miller. On the right side goes Miller, so he loses the basketball. Back tap from behind by right. Here comes Miller the other way for Goreville. Stops in the lane, leaves it off. That's Cavins, shot no good in the foul. Cavins will go line and shoot two. Cavins is one of those kids here tonight, Chris, so far. Started the game shaky, got a foul. Mike Hilton pulled her out, then brought her back in. Now starting to get her sea legs about her in this game. Well, just it's the presence of mind is the wherewithal. And like we said earlier, that that's going to be a factor early on. But the key, Mike, Mike Hilton there, made a great decision to take her out, try to get her rested a little bit, try to get her frame of mind right. And ever since she's come back in, she's made a couple of great plays, both up with a rebound and that shot in the lane there to try to get herself to the line. Next free throw on the way. Up and in. So that would be two by my book that Cavins hit. 12 to 11. Lady Devils with 130 to go in the first quarter. Miller right side to Marlowe in the right corner. SQ back out top to Miller. Miller swings it left side to Williams. As the chant goes to Williams made a shot and air ball, Williams drives to the basket and she fouls. That's one way to get a student body to be quiet. Take the ball to the rim. That'll be the sixth foul on Goreville. And that is on Allison Webb, her second. So Webb and Kyle have two fouls for Goreville. Lappin has two for Lady Devils. Shot up no good. Lady Devils right there. Ice cold from the free throw line. She'll get one more. As the student body still chanting air ball, Michaela Williams at the free throw line. Welcome to playing games on the road. Shot up and no good. Hits the floor. No, it doesn't as Orville gets the rebound. Miller up the right side. Had that coast to coast look till the other Miller from Seth Miller won't go cuts her off. Shelby Miller guarded by Chelsea Miller. Shelby goes down the right side for Gorville and she's fouled on the reach in. Hope anybody doesn't have anywhere to go tonight because there's going to be a lot of free throw shot in this one. And that foul is on Chelsea Miller. Laffin with two, Miller with two. That's not good to have those two kids in foul trouble. Inbound to right on the right side, running one hander, no good. Ball goes to the floor, right gets a rebound in the lane. Picks it up, throws a right block, great pass to Madison Cavins up and in. Cavins with four on the great pass from Jessica Wright. Miller up to Marlowe in the left corner, under a minute to go. Gorville leads 13 12. Eskew from 15, good. Megan Eskew with six points. And it's 14-13. The seesaw game goes back and forth. Miller up to six two run by Goreville, too. Yeah. And it's been a game of runs so far. Miller throws it to Shadow on the right wing, brings it out between the circles. Left side to right. Ironic that her last name's right, but she's a lefty. Right goes left baseline, picks it up. Loses her balance, has to throw it to Miller out by the timeline. She gets it behind her back dribble to the top of the key. With 16 seconds, Mike Hilton shouting instructions from the Goreville bench. Shelby Miller will pull it back. They're going to spread the floor here and probably let Wright go at it here. Wright comes around on the weak side. Now has to pick up her dribble and have to reach in foul Williams. Williams picks up her first. That's the seventh on the Lady Devils, and that will send Lady Cats to the line to shoot the one-on-one. Maddie Garner will have to come into the ball game, And Jessica Wright will go to the free throw line to shoot the one-on-one as Lady Devils have seven fouls. Goreville has six, so we're shooting free throws next eight minutes. Get those circles ready to go on your pieces of paper. They're ready. Yeah, paper, keep piece of paper the key word there. Yes, no pens, just number two, ready to take a test. First free throw up and in. We have crossed past the top of the hour. We need to pause for station identification on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. This is 50,000 Watts of the Showcase on 94.1 FM WMIX. Mount Vernon, Marion, Effingham. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. Rebound off the missed free throw. Shot to Pittsburgh up on this hand from Marlowe. It's no good. We've reached in the first quarter. Session Miller, Waltonville 14. Coreville 14. We'll take a break. Come back with the second quarter. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. When it comes to bone and joint care, only one name should come to mind. 
The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois, your fellowship-trained physician's first priority is specialized orthopedic care, ranging from total joint replacement and spine surgery to shoulder surgery and sports medicine. Our surgeons provide a wide range of specialized treatments that are unparalleled anywhere in Southern Illinois. Located on Veterans Memorial Drive in Mount Vernon and St. Mary's Good Samaritans in Tampas, the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois, discover the difference. If your definition of local is Southern Illinois and adjacent states, Pay no attention to this message. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. Others advertise the message of being a local community bank. However, Community First Bank is the only local community bank exclusively serving Jefferson County with five locations and five ATMs. In short, loans and deposits stay local and benefit you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Limited. We're worldwide. This is the showcase on WMIX and MyWithersRadio.com, presented by Community First Bank. Welcome back to Goreville. Quickly, we start the second quarter. Lady Black Cats have the basketball. Haley Darnell with the basketball. Throws the right side to Cabin. Cabin comes to the lane, loses the ball on the floor, and that'll be a reaching foul on Tasha Door. So foul trouble is going to be an issue in this ball game. Chelsea Miller, Ray Lappin, and Tasha Door, two fouls apiece for the Lady Devils, and Allison Webb and Rihanna Pyle with two fouls apiece for the Lady Cats. Cabins with a line of shoots one one. She's got four points tonight in this ball game. First free throw up and in. She'll get one more. Well played game so far. Seesaw affair here in Johnson County. Cabins will get one more. Lady Black Cats have that 15 14 lead. Second free throw is up, no good. Rebound by Marlowe, the Lady Devils, to Williams. Williams will bring it across the timeline. Leads it from Matty Garner. Coach Metcalf has to go down his bench a little bit further than what he would like at this point. Garner at the top of the key. Garner will go, and that'll be a foul. Lady Devils will get their turn to go to the free throw line. That's the 17th foul on Goreville. Lots of free throws going to be shot in this one. That foul is on number 40, Marby Martin. That's her first, team seven. So, with that being the case, Chris, lots of free throws going to be shot in this one. Oh, it's going to be a long night here in Johnson County. Yes, it is. Got some chance going on Family here guy in the section. Family guy team. Family guy team. Miss free throw. Doesn't matter. Lady Devils can't make free throws. 15-14, Goreville the other way. The Lady Devils right now on a streak of bad free throw shooting in this game so far. Darnell has it. Five seconds almost. She gets it off to right. Goes left side. Tries to throw it inside. Goes off a couple sets of hands. Right over to number 32, Allie Sullivan. That's her first basket. 17-14, Goreville. That's just a bad luck play there. Sets over there. Got the hands on it a couple times. Struck the pass. And then tipped the shot and ended up going in anyway from the right baseline. Sullivan gets the basket. 17-14. Lady Devils trail by three. Get past right wing Garner inside Tasha Door. Splits the double team. Shot block on the left side help. And that foul will go to Haley Darnell. Her first. Team's eight. Door will go line and shoot two. Now, Chris, by my count, nine. Lady Devils are two of seven from the free throw line right now. Two of nine. That's what I have. That's accurate. Wow. There's a free throw made. Thor makes the first. That's her fifth point of the game, 17-15. Yeah, they were just 25, 25% from the stripe in the first quarter. With five locations in Mount Vernon, Dick Sinai, and Woodlawn, Community First Bank is proud to be the official voice of the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Second free throw is missed. Gorville gets the rebound. Comes the other way. Shadow wins on the right wing. Throws it back out top to Keith Darnell. Left side right. Three ball and away off the mark. Hits the floor. A couple of hands get on it. Tipped out of bounds. It'll be Goreville basketball. Door and SQ tipped it out into the front row bleachers here at Goreville. Can't help but wonder how much of that trouble the line belongs to the Goreville student section. They have done a great job of just yelling and being annoying whenever Cesar Blair Walton will try to shoot the free throw. Shadowins to right. Now it's out of the key to Darnell. Darnell will come off the small screen. Leaves it for Sullivan. Sullivan tried to throw it inside. And no one was home. She's trying to get it to Marby Martin, and no one's home. Goreville bring in Madison Cabot and Shelby Miller, and sitting out will be Haley Darnell and Marby Martin. For the Lady Devils, Garner will go out. Lappin will come in. It's F.Q. Lappin, Marlowe, Williams, and Thor for the Lady Devils. 
17-15, Goreville on top by two. We'll pick a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one is over. Crossroads Community Hospital is more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Laffin on the right wing to SQ top of the key. Thought about it, now passes to Laffin. She comes down lane, loses it to Williams in the right corner. Her shot from 15, no good. Rebounded by Jessica Wright. She gets it to Shadowin. Up the left side of the floor, she comes. Down to the left wing, the left baseline. Leaves it in the left corner for Sullivan. Her shot from three is good. Allison Sullivan off the bench with a three. It's 20 to 15, the Lady Black Cat. Laughing to the top of the key. Left side, Marlow, 15 footer up, and rattles in and out. Two Lady Black Cats fight for it, and it goes out of bounds off their hands, and it'll stay with the Lady Devils. Danny, outside of Megan Eskew, the mid range jumper just has not been there for the Lady Devils tonight. Everything has been inside or three from the free throw line. Right now, the problem for the Lady Devils is they can't score. There's a shot from Eskew in the left corner off the inbound. It's no good. Miller on the rebound for Goreville. Goreville comes the other way. That's Miller coast to coast good. Goreville's on a little bit of a run using the crowd. It's 22-15. She is something else. Mac, Coach Mechtaff's going to play through this. This is something he usually does, lets his team play through things. Miller throws it inside the door. She crowds it underneath, shot no good in the foul. Door will go back to that free throw line and shoot two shots. And that foul... No, number 33, Anna Pyle. That's her third, Chris. Six Sullivan. Is it on the I, think, I think you're partially screened by the official staff and he's throwing up the mechanics. Well, I'm watching Mike Kelton. He's not happy with it either. He went 30. I am with not giving the numbers. First free throw, no good. She'll get one more. The suit section that time was quiet. And the free throw was missed. There we go. Mary had a little lamb. High cross buns is next. Yes. Forty's got a little lamb, and Dorr makes the free throw. I'll tell you what, they're rather creative, but yet staying within the boundaries of tasteful. We appreciate right. that. Miller on the left wing. Dribbles back to the top of the key for Goreville. Goes all the way to the right side, leaves it for Shadowins on the dribble handoff. Shadowins comes down the lane, gets it underneath two. Seven for 34, Madison Cabins up and in on the dribble drive play. Here comes Lappin, too fast, going away now by Jessica Rice. She's got to run out the other way and scores. Right now, Goreville's taking it to Chester for Walkville. The nerves are gone, the nervous emotions are gone, and the Black Cats, Lady Black Cats, playing well. Well, the energy is there, and that's going to hurt the Lady Devils. Lapping the SQ, her shot no good, tipped out of bounds. It'll go to Goreville on the out-of-bounds play. Lapping's going to check back in, or Miller's going to check back in for Lappin. Miller for Lappin, Lappin for Miller, however you want to look at it. It's 26-16, Goreville on top by 10, with 440 to go in the first half. With five Jefferson County branches and responsive quality service for your accounts, Community First Bank would like to be the first to say, welcome back to personal banking, member FDIC. Miller with the basketball, dribbling on the left side, looking for a screen. Miller versus Miller in this one. Miller still dribbling with Miller, still guarding. Miller out to south, the key on the pass now to Cavan. Cavins and Shadow ones on the right wing out by the logo. Throws it in the corner to Sullivan. Sullivan gets it to right. Shot no good. Right gets her own rebound. In the lane, kicks it out to Miller on the left wing. She comes down to paint, running one end there off the glass. Rebounded by Gorville. Kick back out Shadow ones. Her three on the way. No good. Rebound door on the third attempt. Lady Devils giving up too many chances. Door to Miller to Marlow. Left side running one hander off the glass. No good. Lady Devils can't buy one right now. They have two points in the quarter on two free throws. We're at the 4 345 mark. Wright dribbles around in the top key. Now goes to the free throw line, leaves it for Miller. Miller splits two defenders, got to travel. Yep, good call by the official. Tried to jump stop, but pitter pattered the feet. Tried to triple jump that time, I think, just about. Had two of the jumps down, and only had one more to go. But that was still a great move, great spot there by Shelby Miller trying to get to the basket. If she had been able to stick that first line and throw off the runner, I think she would have been okay. Scoreboard update, the JV game, Goreville won 55-40, and at halftime at the Waltonville Boys Class S Regional, it's Woodlawn leading Waltonville 36-33, and Lady Devils have the basketball pitch for to Miller. Miller down the lane, she goes running one-hander off, no good. Boy, Lady Devils can't buy one. Rebound, Goreville. Here comes the Lady Cats the other way. Darnell up the right side, comes. Loses the basketball right in the lane, finds it up at the end. Right place, right time. Right has nine. 28-16, Rick Metcalf wants a timeout. Oh, that was, uh, to explain that a little bit further, Wright had left her back foot, was starting to stumble, and was able to get it off with her left hand off the window. Just a great move to the bucket by Jessica Wright to make something out of nothing. 
because that was for sure going to be a turnover. With that turnover, with three minutes to go, Lady Devils trail Corville 28-16. The previous scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. You might be paying too much for auto insurance. Give Scott Owens a call for a free discount double check like a good neighbor. State Farm agent Scott Owens is there. Chris, this is a, you know, you hate to say in the second quarter, but when you're in a case like the Ready Red Devils, Rick Metcalf kind of let this fester for a while to see if they could play out of it. Couldn't do it. They might be in trouble. Uh, it's down 12 here in the second quarter, and like you said, and that was a great reaction. You don't want to waste all your timeouts because you remember what happened last time. Went down the wire and ended up in overtime. You don't want to be without your timeouts when you desperately need them. And it had the right idea. A veteran coach who obviously knows he's doing been successful everywhere he's been. And you don't want to say that this one is over at this point, but if they don't start getting some baskets here pretty soon, Danny, we're going to have a little bit of trouble in this one. one. What they'll do if they don't change things, this game might be over if you're the Lady of Devils. Right, exactly. Yeah. Miller throws in the right corner to SQ. Lady Devils cold right now. Pitch first to Marlowe to SQ in the right corner. They throw it in to Miller. Cuts down the lane. Back to Marlowe. Marlowe dribbles down the line. Now she'll throw up a running one. Aaron's good. There's the basket after a timeout. First field goal for the Lady Devils of the quarter. 20-18. Miller rockets the other way. Throws in the right corner. Dribbling back out with it is Pritchett. Pritchett. Back out. Top to right. Now to Miller. Three on the way. It's going to be off to Mark Marlowe on the rebound. Didn't leave her hand the right way. Drifted off to the right. Miller up in the right corner to Eskew. They tried to go to Pittsburgh. It's tipped out to Miller to Eskew in the right corner. Lob inside door. Double team. Spins around. Shot no good. Rebound. And here comes Goreville. Darnell quickly the other way. Dribbles across the timeline. Not sure about that one because I don't think all three points no. were on one side of the floor or the other. Had it. That, that trail foot kind of was drifting. And then she, don't, she had set it back down, but that trail foot had never crossed. Right. So she had the ability to go back and forth, so no argument from either side, although I'd like to see that replay. Lady Devils have it. Pitch for top of the key. Miller left side to Marlowe in the corner. Askew. Marlowe down the lane. Kicks it back out top of the key. Long three from Miller off the iron. Rebound at the free throw line by Pritchett. Pritchett gets it off to Miller. Miller quickly the other way. Boy, what a play. Miller to Darnell for a layup. She's got five. And Boyle, boy. Shelby Miller can flat out play. 2-3 zone here from the Lady Cats. Marlowe on the left wing. You can play zone. The other team's not hit. Eskew with a top of the key to Miller. 140 to go in the first half. 30-18. to 18. Goreville on top of Festival or Waltonville. Marlowe to Pitchford. Right wing. To Marlowe. Marlowe has a three on the way. It's off the iron. Rebound weak side. There's Darnell. Get it to Miller, I say. Wright brings it up this time. Right up the floor. Leaves it for Miller in the left wing. Miller's crafted. With 120 to go. Miller's going to work on Miller. Now he's going to back it out. Yeah. Miller off the screen. Down the lane. Kicks it right corner to Darnell. Back out top of the key to Pritchett. Pritchett now left corner to right. She comes. Spin. On Pittsburgh, pass picker dribble up top of the key pass to Darnell. Darnell down the lane, lost it out of bounds, and it'll go to the Lady Devils. 102 to go. It's 30 to 18. Lady Devils on top by 12. The bad thing about the Devils not capitalizing, Danny, is the fact that Goreville has seven turnovers. Lady Devils really only actually have two turnovers. They just can't buy a bucket. No. 12 points lead for the Lady Devils. 12 point lead. Lady Devils need to get this in single digits before the halftime. 2-3 zone implemented by Goreville as we go under a minute. Fester Valera Waltonville with a basketball. Miller with it between the circles. Throws it right side to Pitchford. Pitchford skip pass. That's going to get tipped. Oh, Marlowe made a great play to cut in front and threw the foul. Brianna Pyle is going to pick up her third. And that's the tenth on Goreville. And Marlowe will go to line and shoot two. She has two points in the game. Actually, four. And she's two of two from the free throw line, is what I was trying to say. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports or on our Facebook page, WMIX Sports. Lots of free information on both of those. You do not have to be a Twitter person or on Facebook to find that information. Marlowe makes the first. Yikes. Look. Um, round in, round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, and Marlowe knocks it down on the wheels on the bus. Really thought the hot cross buns was coming well, up. Yeah. Maybe not. It, it's it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. Goreville too fast to the way turnover. And my face well, I'm so fun with this. It's a tasteful student section, Chris, and we're having all kinds of songs. What if they take requests? 
I'll Probably not in the second I half, obviously. I think Family Guy theme was something straight out of the SIU marching band. Well, yeah, I, I don't, they won't do it in the second half, obviously, with Goreville going that way. Marlowe with it. Lady Devils down 10 with a basketball, 30 seconds to go. Marlowe kicks it over to, from Miller to Marlowe, I should say. And Marlowe's going to go back to the line and shoot, too. Another foul. That's more than 10 team fouls. That's the second foul. They on them quit, or you think they'll get louder? Because they were yelled across the gym at the JV game. They very well, and they switch sides. You never know. It's a different thing. Marlo missed the free throw. Should get one more. We'll have a scoreboard update coming up on the Red Lake College halftime show, along with scoring and stats of this one. Marlo makes them both. That didn't face her much. She is four out of six from the line. 30-21, Lady Devils will pressure. Here comes Goreville. That is Cavins up the lane, gets it to Shadowins. Right block up, no good in the foul. Oh, and that's a bad foul for Chelsea Miller. That's her third. Chelsea could ill afford to do that, pick up that foul, Chris, in that situation. No, and that's the last thing that they needed at that point. I mean, she hasn't scored yet tonight. But now that she's in foul trouble, you're going to see a lot less of her driving towards the basket and have to rely on the outside shots. That's been there for anybody. Shadowins makes the first. And there's a lot of people in foul trouble in this game. Miller has three. Lappin two and Door two for the Lady Devils. Webb has two. Cavins has two. And Pyle has three for Gorka. Second free throw by Shadow was also good. I was impressed with her play at Seth for Valier back on January 11th. Here comes Lappin up with 20 seconds to go. Lappin will back it out behind the timeline. Crossover, 12 tip out. Oh, hits a fan in the back. A fan was trying to bring a grandchild down the bleachers and got a basketball tip in the back. Now she's going to take the grandchild out. we got to go, she says. Beat the lines of the concession stand. Lappin with it with 16 seconds. Goes to the left wing. Here comes dribble out for the left, Lady Devils. Pittsford right wing to Marlowe for a two. It's no good. Front of the iron. Here comes Wright with six. Wright goes around, loses the basketball. It's going to go to Miller. Miller will pick it up, and that's she steps out of bounds. 1.6 seconds to go. Goreville turns it over. Lady Devils have another chance. Final in Waltonville. Did you get that? Yeah, I got that. We're going to save it for halftime. Gotcha. Time running out the way it was. Pitchford has it. A lot closer than what most pundits expected. Pitchford to Lappin with one. The Lady Devils, Marlowe from the outside, will not count. And we played 16 minutes of basketball here in Goreville. It's the Goreville Lady Black Cats, 32 Sector Blair Waltonville 21. We're going to step out for a break to back with the Red Lake College Halftime Show. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Ford dealer at Ford Square, Mount Vernon. Outwork, outplay, outsmart, all the rest. I am talking about the 2012 Ford F-150 with four high-tech engines, including our revolutionary EcoBoost, the toughest truck lineup in the class is also the most powerful and the most fuel efficient. It tows the most, up to 11,300 pounds. It hauls the most, up to 3,120 pounds. It generates the most available power, up to 411 horsepower. It gets you the most bang for your buck at the pump, up to 23 miles per gallon highway. Nine distinctive models, three cab configurations, three box lanes. Whatever you need a truck to do best, the 2012 Ford F-150 lineup delivers. Come into Ford Square today and find out why the Ford F-150 pickup is the best truck out there at 1501 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois. Stick a reminder on your phone, jot it down on the calendar, or tie a string on your finger. Don't miss the Saturday Sports Show every week after the 8 o'clock news on AM 940 and MyWithersRadio.com. Scores, guests, content, networking, knowledge, the occasional argument, yada, yada, yada. We do it all. You might say we're a little versatile. It's the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and MyWithersRadio.com, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. This is Melody True with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. Are you tired of your bank charging you fees for your checking account? At People's National Bank, we are proud to be a local family-owned bank that offers a free checking account with no minimum balance. Open with just $100 and get a free debit card, free online bill pay, and many other great benefits. 
stop by People's National Bank and see what banking with a family-owned bank is all about. People's National Bank, member FDIC, you still pay once a month to avoid $5 dormant fee. Visa check card must be used at least once every 90 days to avoid $10 inactivity fee. Hey, moms and dads, don't stay up at night trying to figure out how to pay for your kid's education. There's no need to worry. I send my kids to Rend Lake College. RLC offers the same high-quality education as a four-year school at a fraction of the cost. Plus, they get to stay close to home. Tuition, room, and board are like 19 grand every year at the four years according to the National Center for Education Statistics. At RLC, tuition, books, and supplies are only approximately four grand. That's Math 101. And with over 100 degree and certificate programs, they have the exact courses your kids need to be well on their way to a great career. Give your college-bound child the quality education they deserve without breaking the bank. Rend Lake College is the right choice. Whether your student plans to transfer to a university or train for direct entry into the workforce, call RLC at 437-5321 to speak to a counselor. I actually logged on to rlc.edu. That's rlc.edu. This is the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. The Red Lake College Halftime Show starts now. Welcome back to Goreville High School. Halftime here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. The Goreville Lady Black Cats lead the best of the Walton, the Lady Devils. 32-21 here on the Red Lake College Halftime Show. Red Lake College has been the vehicle to a brighter future for over 40 years. Students can choose from more than 100 degree and certificate programs. Save thousands of dollars at Red Lake College and get to work. Red Lake College, it's time. Lady Devils trail 32-21 here at the half. We're going to take a break and come back with scoring and stats and a scoreboard update here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIS. Don't miss the final days of the huge winter cleanup sale at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 80% off Christmas and winter decor, 30 to 60% off clearance items, and 10 to 15% off everything else, including your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Hill, Broy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of home decor, wall decor, ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. It's the huge winter cleanup at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. More basketball action ahead. Presented by Community First Bank. Welcome back to Goreville High School halftime. The Lady Black Cats lead Fletcher Fleur Waltville 32 21 on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. This is the Red Lake College halftime show. Red Lake College is over 100 degrees certificate programs to choose from. It's been your vehicle to a brighter future for over 40 years. Red Lake College, it's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu. Danny Swinsky and Chris Hugo alongside. Lady Devils trail 32-21 at the half. My mic count is Chris will go to stats later. One field goal in the second quarter for the Lady Devils. And Chris, I, can t- I can tweet and you go at it just like I do. You've learned from me as the best multitasking. I have. I'm just kidding. I'm just bragging a little no, bit. No, that's make... where I got my multitasking during basketball, so I might as well just go at it the way you would do it. Well, you may go ahead and give the stats of scoring and multitask while you're at it. First, let's take a look at the team stats here for both teams. The Goreville Lady Black Cats are 10 of 16 from the inside to the half, shooting 62.5%. Conversely, the Lady Devils are just 7 of 28 from the inside for 25%. Three-point shooting, not very good for either team, but Goreville just a little bit better, two for six here in the first half for 33.3%. The Lady Devils came up empty, 0 of 5. From the floor, the Lady Black Cats are 12 of 22 for 54.5%. While the Devils are 7 of 33 for 21.2%. Free throw shooting also favors Goreville 6 of 8 from the stripe for 75%. While the Lady Devils were 7 of 17 for 41.1%. Looking at the rebounding edge, it belongs with Goreville 19 to 11. 14 defensive boards, 5 on the offensive glass for Goreville. Of those 11 rebounds, just 6 defensive boards for the Lady Devils, 5 of them off the offensive glass. Just 2 turnovers for the Lady Devils, however, as the turnover disadvantage belongs to Goreville with nine. Taking a look at your individual scores, the Devils are led by Rachel Marlowe, seven points, six apiece from Tasha Dorr and Megan Eskew, and two from Michaela Williams to give them 21. Now for the Goreville Black Cats, they're, 
They are led with Jessica Wright, nine. Seven from Allison Sullivan. Five from Madison Cabins and Haley Darnell. Four from Shelby Miller. And two from Tiffany Chad Owens. This is a halftime score of the Gloreville Lady Black Cats, 32. The Special Valier Waltonville Lady Red Devils, 21. And, Chris, it seemed like once the start out man-to-man, Gloreville started man-to-man in this game. And then, once the Lady Devils couldn't knock down shots, there was a timeout, and the Gloreville came out in zone after that and continued to stay in that zone simply because Lady Devils weren't in. So why play man-to-man given driving lane when you can stay back in the zone and Lady Devils not hitting shots? Exactly. I mean, why waste that effort? much more effort to guard man-to-man. Let's sit back in the zone, let them continue to miss shots because the mid-range jumper outside of making an SQ in that first half just wasn't falling. They're having to rely on that over-the-top lob. And once that kind of disappeared, Danny, the game just kind of dissipated for Central there Waltonville, and Gorville really started taking advantage after the seniors calmed down after starting off a little emotional and a little shaky to start the game. Lady Devils have 16 more minutes to get back in this one. They trail 32-21 to 21 at the half. This is the Red Lake College Halftime Show. They can save you thousands of dollars on your education. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu to see which of the more than 100 degrees can get programs is right for you. Red Lake College, it's time. for Bill 32, such as Lower Waltonville 21. Chris and I will be back after the break for the second half. This is the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. If your definition of local is Southern Illinois and adjacent states, pay no attention to this message. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. Others advertise the message of being a local community bank. However, Community First Bank is the only local community bank exclusively serving Jefferson County with five locations and five ATMs. In short, loans and deposits stay local and benefit you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lane. Car insurance with personal service at no extra charge? What a novel concept. That's why State Farm is a leader in providing insurance and financial services and remains strong in this economy. At State Farm, Scott Owens is dedicated to helping you get the coverage that's right for you and the discounts you deserve. No one takes care of you like State Farm. Scott Owens will prove it. Call Scott at 242-3770. That's 242-3770. Like a good neighbor, Scott Owens is there. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Goreville High School, the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on the road in Johnson County. Or Johnson County, I should say. Goreville leading Central Valor Waltonville 32 21 at the half. And he's going to get Chris Hugo alongside it. One score has come in from a Class S Boys Basketball Regional Championship. At Waltonville tonight, it was Woodlawn defeating Waltonville 68-46. So, I believe by last count, Wayne City, Rome, the Hoylton Grand Prairie Co-op, and Woodlawn are four of the 16 teams that will make the trek to Ren Lake on Saturday for the Class S Sweet 16. A lot of local interest in that one. A lot of local interest. That's a big crowd that, of course, will play Saturday all day. Monday, 3.35, 6.30 and 8. Thursday, 6.30 and 8. And then next Saturday at 2.30 and 4. Of course, at Ren Lake College, it's a week-long affair, Class M, and then it's sprinkled in there, and then L will start the next week in the morning of the Class S State Championship. That scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. You might be paying too much for auto insurance. Give Scott Owens a call for a free discount double-check like a good neighbor. State Farm agent Scott Owens is there. All right, news for you, fellas. Twitter and Facebook both updated. Good for you. I expect Gorville scores on Facebook. My, my new phone does not work well here. Well, if that's the case, well, it Roger's is. going bye-bye for right now. If I'm going to keep us afloat. All I, right, I keep us afloat, baby. Miller will get it from Lappin. Miller shoots a 15-footer off the front of the iron, rebounded by Gorville's number 34, Madison Cabin. She throws it away. Chelsea Miller has it, and she tackles. And Gorville will get their first foul. That foul is on number 34, Madison Cabins, her third, team's first. And she starts playing so well in that second quarter again, you can afford to lose her to foul trouble now. There'll be some attrition in this one. There's too many people in foul trouble not to have it. Lapping gets the inbound pass from SQ over to Miller on the left wing. Shot good. Chelsea Miller makes her first point and first field goal of the game. And it's 32-23 as Goreville breaks the press easily. they got Kevin behind the press. That's too easy, 34-23. Goreville was ready for that. Miller between the circles. Still a zone by Goreville. To Marlow, back to Miller. 
Got away with a double dribble. Miller throws it left side to last and back to Miller top of the key to Eskew. Eskew on the right wing, one dribble. Now throws it left wing to Lappin. She goes baseline, left side glass, good. Ray Lappin gets her first point to the game. It's 34-25. Lady Devils zoning a little bit on the press. Shadow and tried to get it to Cavins. Eskew tips it away. Shadow recovers in the right corner. Shadow and throws it out left side. There's a cutting right to the basket up and no good miss the layup door on the rebound. Right tips it away from door behind her. Right tries to get it to Webb. Webb will go up for a and no good. Ball tipped, rebounded door. Oh, missed opportunity there for Gorville. Lappin has it go for the Lady Devils. Up the right side. Picks up her dribble. Now throws and that's a foul. Oh, oh, a travel. All the travel before the foul. That's oh, a good call. Yeah, that probably was. Now that I think about it, I know Lappin stopped it. Did pick up her pivot before the hack. That's a good call. Lady Cats have the basketball right. Gets it in the Miller. She comes up. She's checked by Ray Lappin. That's three on Lappin. First on the Devils is half. If you're tired of big corporate banking, you have a choice in Jefferson County. Community First Bank is at home at Dixon and Woodlawn and Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Gorville triggers in the basketball. Right to Shadowins on the left wing to Miller. Out by the volleyball line. Miller will dribble off the screen from Webb. Threw it in to nobody. It was trying to get right, but Lappin read the play. Lappin brings it across the timeline. Gets it to Marlowe. To Miller on the left wing. Miller will dribble to between the circle. 620 to go in the third. Lady Devils down 34-25 here at Goreville. Eskew holds above her head to Lappin. Lappin with it. Throws the right side to Eskew. They lob inside over the top of the door. Double team back to Eskew to Lappin. To Miller top to key. Miller drives down lane. Shot blocked Shadowin. Too much of the body. Shadowin picks up her first foul. Team second. And that will send Chelsea Miller line to shoot two. I really think if Chelsea Miller, Chelsea Miller can shake off the dust from the free throw line here. The rust even that this might change the complexity of the ball game. This might get her going. Miller hits the first. Did you catch the song by the Gordville student? I didn't catch this one. Uh, I was still too busy remembering they played at Serbia. Yeah, Mark the band here from Gordville, very nice. Now, it's going to be tough to match Centralia, and the kids aren't all right by the offspring. But right. Serbia's a good start. Miller's second free throw up and in. The Lady Devils off to a better stop. start on this end of the floor. They'll pick up on a little zone pressure. Diamond and one to be exact. Here comes Lappin. That gets it up to Shadowin. Lappin couldn't get that pass. Well, Shadowin tried to throw to a cutting Darnell. Darnell cut too fast. Shadowin's pass behind her turnover. The press works. Remember, we'll pick a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one is over. Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than the hospital. It's what health care should be. Miller will bring it across the timeline. 5.48 to go in the third. Lady Devils down seven. Williams throws it baseline to the bleacher. So a little case of what you can do worse, we can do worse better. That's just a simple case of trying to avoid the traffic in the lane, get, avoid those hands defensively, and just threw it a little too far out of the reach of Ray Lapp. Pressure by the Devil. Webb out the inbounds from Miller. Miller behind her back down the lane. She goes. Leaves it on the left wing. Shadow and stops the key right. She'll launch that three up and off the bar. Three Mount Marlowe. That hit rim and backward at the same time. Marlowe up to Miller on the right side. And double dribble. Yep. Paused on the dribble a couple of times. And the official picks up on it. SQ will check in for Lappin. Checking in for the Lady Black Cat will be Sullivan. She'll come across the floor and grab Shadowing. 34-27, Goreville by 7. If Goreville wins, they're outright champs of the BDC West. If the Lady Devils win, they'll get a share of it. Miller will bring it across the timeline for Goreville. About the volleyball line as the Lady Devils pick up man-to-man. Out by the line, volleyball line. Goreville being very patient with the seven-point lead and five to go in the third. SQ stepped out on the edge. Miller dribbled between her and Miller. Miller throws it, and there's a travel. Miller traveled to basketball. Didn't see that. It's turned over the half. Mm. I should make that four. That's the wrong thing. Another scoreboard at Big Girls Basketball Variety. Mr. Hugo searching the net. North Clay leads Wayne City at the half, 25-18. That scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. If you're paying too much for auto insurance, get a free discount double check. Call Scott Owens at 242-3770. Lady Devils with a basketball. Miller throws it to Williams on the right wing. Williams holds above her head, throws it away. Here comes Goreville the other way. Sullivan one-on-one with Lappin. Lappin can't foul. Sullivan shoots no good, and Lappin did foul. 
That's her fourth foul by my count. That's the second on the Lady Devils here in this second half. That's not officially accurate. It's officially accurate now because I see it on the scoreboard. So Pittsburgh's going to come in for Lappin. And Lappin's going to get the fifth probably this third quarter and the majority of the fourth if I had to guess. First free throw up and in 35-27. Your community, your choice, your bank with five locations and friends and neighbors on staff will understand your needs. Community First Bank keeps it simple. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Second free throw also good. You can follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports or go to our Facebook page, WMIX Sports, both free and available, whether you're on Twitter and Facebook or not. Lots of free information there going on in the sports world. I have a newfound appreciation for you, by the way. Miller to Pitchford on the left wing, back to Miller. Miller comes down the lane, now throws it left side to Pitchford, inside the door off the blocks, but the double team and scores. Door gets the basket in the lane, 36-29. Lady Devils are within seven. Has to feel decent with all the stuff they've had going on. Miller splits three, now sold away by Chelsea Miller. Chelsea quickly the other way, it's one on two. Miller pulls up, shot will be hard. Off the glass, rebound by Webb of Goreville. She'll dribble into the front court and slow it up and leave it for Darnell. Darnell throws in the right corner to right. Right double teamed on that right wing. Still on the left-hand dribble. Goes right side. That's a push foul. Yep, that's a good call. Lappin just fouled out. And that's by my count. Lappin just fouled out, right? Yes, sir. Fouled out with two. Yeah, Rick Metcalf rolled the dice, and it came up snake eyes. Bailey Jones is going to come out and come in for Lappin. That's her two. That's two points in the game, and Lappin's done. Can't see that going on. You roll the dice sometimes on the road, and those came up snake eyes. Or in a shift captain crew game, you didn't get the 6-5-4. Left side with it to right on the inbound. Back out top, the key to Darnell. What are you shaking your head about? I right have no idea the three. Shot in front of the iron, no good. Rebounded by Marlow. I'll explain the golf course yeah, yeah, while the land later. Marlow leaves it for Miller. Miller will throw it to Door on the right block. Double team, jump shot, glass, good. Sasha Door has four and a quarter, ten in the game. It's 36-31. You have to give her a strong look as your Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game at the end of this. And we'll pick one when that's done. Crossroads Community Hospital is more than the hospital. It's what health care should be. Goreville might have something to say about that. That three is no good by Darnell. Rebounded by Marlow. Marlow is double team. She gets it to Pitchford. Pitchford up to Miller. Miller and Door the other way. Two on one. Quickly though covering up is Darnell. And Darnell tips it from behind. Darnell got it from behind, and then Miller tried to go for the ball. And you're going to have a uh, trail official who they would have been the four official. Who? Catch a foul on that. And Miller is going to be picking up her fourth foul. Lappin's fouled out. Miller's got four. Here comes Williams back in for the Lady Devils. Rick Metcalf really trying to find some combination to work with what's going on with the Lady Devils. Cold shooting, foul trouble. Point guard fouled out of the game. Down by five here with three minutes to go in the third. got to feel pretty lucky. Yeah. I mean, the things have gone wrong combined with the cold shooting in the first half. And it's actually nothing short of miraculous that they're still in this ballgame at this juncture. Oh, my. Left side with it is right. Top of the key on Sullivan. Now goes to Webb at the free throw line. Webb drives down the lane, stolen away by Door. Door gets it to Williams. Williams up to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh across the timeline. Rick Metcalf's going to have the girls play here. They're going to get significant minutes in a hostile environment. Marlowe from 15, left side, no good. we got a foul. And uh, that's on the Lady Devil. That is on number four, Bailey Jones. Just checked in for Miller. That's their first team's fourth. Wow. Well, foul trouble galore, and the Lady Devil fans across the way with the basketball. Here comes Miller off the double team by Marlowe. Marlowe got away with a foul. Up to the right, off the baseline, shot no good. Webb battles, gets the rebound for Gorville, shot no good, and Webb will go line and shoot two. Webb, man, oh man, to Gorville is going to have some opportunities in the free throw line. Gorville, that foul is on number 40, Tasha Door, her third. Fifth on the Lady Devils. <laughs> the Lady Devils are in some foul trouble, Mr. Hugo. That they are. Big foul trouble. Big foul trouble. That free throw is made. Webb will get one more. Shot up and in. She makes them both. We have a lot of basketball this week, don't we? Yes, we do. Just hit me. Yeah. 
Uh, another another staff night week. What's wrong with that? That's Nothing at all. Yeah, I like it. Miller between the circles, left side to Williams, left baseline Marlowe. Marlowe goes baseline, running shot off the rim, no good. Marlowe will rebound, shot glass, goes off the iron front. Marlowe gets her own board. Has it stolen away by Gorville, and it's dipped and stolen. And here comes Gorville having it back. Gorville tried to get it up to the rim. That was stolen. She was trying to hit Webb, who was tipped out of bounds by the Lady Devils. And this fight, the action continues. Sullivan inbounds to right in the right corner. She'll go around the screen. Try to leave it for Webb. Great pick and roll. Works to perfection. Webb scores. She's got four. 40-31. Lady Blackcast. Restaurant quality pick and roll right oh, there. Oh, man. Like that sloppy Joe's we had. Awesome. Whew. Trip did a great job of helping them put that together. Ann Gray in the hospitality room. We appreciate her cooking that food. With a door in the lane from Williams. Top of the key. Miller for a three. Looks good. Isn't good. Rebound goes to the floor. Door has it for the Lady Devils. Door kicks it back out to Miller. Things get a little more feisty in the lane. Marlowe dribbles down the lane, and that's a reach-in foul. You knew that was coming, Jeff. That was going to be a reach-in foul somewhere. That's the third on Goreville. That foul is on number 15, Jessica Wright, her first. Lady Devils with 16 fouls, Goreville with three, but every foul that's on the board has been a foul. Top of the key, right corner now with it is Door. To Jones, top of the key, Miller to Williams. Williams goes left side. Back to Miller, inside door. Double team to Williams, left wing. Shot from 15 short. Kicked around, rebounded by Sullivan for Goreville. 110 to go in the third. 40 31, Goreville up front to Webb, down the lane. She goes up and in. Right to see post players get rewarded for hustling, and right got it to Webb. 42 31, 60 seconds left in the third. Jones drives double team and a foul. A little too handsy there by Goreville. That's on number 10, Shelby Miller. That's her second. Team's fourth. Familiar faces, new places. Bank with Ray and Bria, Community First Banks, new 42nd Street location in Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Inbounds underneath the Lady Devils basket. Williams threw it in, and Webb stole it away. Webb up to right. Ryan will bring it up the left side of the floor. Down past Sullivan, tipped by Miller. Sullivan battles, bodies everywhere. Jump ball along to Goreville. 48 seconds to go in the third. You enjoying that multitasking over there? Like well, I'm actually time? checking some things out. Here's Tyra Butts is now five points short of 2,000. She's taken out tonight's game with 37 against okay. Evansville Wright. Hey, man. Webb has it on the inbounds. That gives it to Darnell in the corner. Lost it out of bounds. Off her right, left shoe. Good call. Wow. All right. I went, went off her shoe. That's absolutely right. She got knocked off the puck, but the ball did go off her shoe. Right. I'm not saying that there may or may not should have been a foul call there. Just saying. Right. With the call that he made, that was accurate. Or lack thereof. Sure. Right. 40 seconds to go in the third. Miller will bring it across the timeline. She'll dribble to the left. Dribble out coming. SQ throw in the right wing to Marlowe. Marlowe throws it out top of the key. SQ has to recover in backcourt. Double team to the timeline. Picked it up. Got rid of it to Marlowe. Now left side to Miller. Miller to Williams in the corner. The overall chant will come. And that's a hand foul on Darnell. That's her second team fifth. Got anywhere to go? Because you're not going anywhere. Oh, no, I have foul. a vacation day tomorrow, and I'm very thankful for that. Oh, that's right. You're taking that. Oh, that's nice. Good. Now I have nine that I have to, after today, nine I have to burn before May 6th. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't know how that operated. That's my anniversary day. F you with it. Gives it to Williams. Williams running 10 footer. Good. That'll quiet the two section to our right. It's now 42-33. Lady Devils down nine. Though Gorville has it right to the left side with 10. Throws out behind the wing. Now throws it inside Webb. Left block. Nobody there. Layup up. No good. Missed the left. Got her own rebound. And now we're going to have a foul. That foul is going to be on. Um, I don't know who that was on. They're going to say that's on number 42, Marlow. That'll be her second. Team six. I have the team with seven. That's seven, yeah. I didn't right. I looked at the board. I think no. seven, yeah. One more slash. Didn't count all my all my tally marks. AKA Saxon Math. Allison Webb at the line to shoot the one on one. Misses that one. Rebounded Marlowe with four seconds. Marlowe gets it to Williams. Up to Miller. Miller at the timeline won't get a shot off. Three quarters in the book. Orville 42. Cesar Miller Waltonville 33. Back after this break for the fourth quarter. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. 
Don't miss the final days of the huge winter cleanup sale at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 80% off Christmas and winter decor, 30 to 60% off clearance items, and 10 to 15% off everything else, including your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Steel, Broy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of home decor, wall decor, ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. It's the huge winter cleanup at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. We're worldwide. This is the showcase on WMIX and MyWithersRadio.com, presented by Community First Bank. Welcome back to Goreville High School. Three quarters are in the book. 42-33 Goreville. It is Whiskey Chris Hugo, Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Did you tweet that score or do I need to? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Marlow with it, right corner to SQ. Inside double T, that's not going to work. Webb steps in front of the door. Gets it to Miller for Goreville. Lady Cat sprints the other way. Miller fouled. That'll be Shelby Miller going to the line to shoot the one and one. Might be, might be two shots. That foul is on number 42, Rachel Marlow, near third. Team's eight. And Miller will be at the line. Her first free throw up and in. She'll get one more. She's got five in the game. 43-33 with five locations in Melbourne and Dick Sign and Woodlawn. Community First Bank is proud to be the official voice of the showcase. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member of FBIC. Shelby Miller makes both, and no surprise, she's a thousand point scorer in her career. And now, the Lady Devils find themselves down 11 once again. Where the basketball is at, in the corner, back to Williams, top of key to Miller. Out by the volleyball line. The zone picks up for Goreville. They stretch it out. Miller tries to hit SQ. Stolen away, though, and a great defensive play by Cavan. She loses out of bounds. And it'll go to the Goreville Blackcats. Another score has come in. Sandoval will beat Woodlawn tonight, 48-46 high school girls. To go along with the Lady Indians of Wayne City Trail at North Clay, the half 25-18. And Goreville did a little bit of what you can do worse, we can do worse better. Esky will check in. And checking out, or Esky will check out, I should say. And Pittsburgh will check in. With a basketball, Miller. Throws it left side to Marlowe. Marlowe left baseline back to Miller. Miller will step in. Three ball on the way is no good off the mark, off the backboard, out of bounds, though. Two Lady Black Cats had their hands on it, lost it out of bounds, and it'll go back to the floor. Except for Valera Waltville with seven away to go in the game. Marlow will trigger in the corner to Miller. Back out top of the key to Pitchford. Right side Miller. They're setting her up for a 15-footer, and she knocks it down. Rachel Marlow hits her first basket of the quarter. Nine in the game. Lady Devils press. Shadow one comes up the left side across the timeline. Steps out. Steps with the dribble. Looks over. Tries to get it. Now can't get it to anybody. Now gives it to Cavan. Cavan, double teamed out here by the logo. Gets it to the shadow ones on the wing. She comes down the lane. Gets it to Sullivan. Three balling away. It's no good. Ball gets to the right wing. That's picked up by Miller, and Miller lost out of bounds. What's that stand over score? Stand over score was, i got to look it up on my phone again. The stand over score was um, 48-46 stand over. With the basketball, that's Webb in the corner. Webb picks it up and holds it, now throws it. It's recovered by Wright. She'll throw for running one hander. No good. Marlowe on the rebound. Marlowe with it. Marlowe gives it off to Miller across the timeline. Throws it to Williams in the right corner. Williams walked out away with it. Miller now throws to nobody. Stolen away by Cavan. Cavan comes the other way with Wright. Cavan will take it herself and miss the layup. Wright on the rebound weak side. Miss the layup. Rebounded by Sullivan. She gets tackled. Sullivan will go line and shoot. Probably the one on one. That foul is on number 42, Marlowe. That's her fourth. And I see some of the crowd yelling. Yeah. And that's going to be a problem as an issue. The fans get a little more feisty. 
as Marlow picks up her fourth. Lady Devils into foul trouble here. Of course, Lappin fouled out in the third quarter with two points. Miller has four. Door has three. Marlow has four. Sullivan's first free throw on the one one No good. And Door has the rebound. Mm. Orville just can't quite get things shut down. It's only up nine. Six minutes to go in the game. Miller holds above her head, throws it over the top of Door's head. Out of bounds. Another killer turnover. As we mentioned, Woodmont lost tonight to Sandoval on the road, I believe that 48, was. 48-46. Fourth Twitter. play, beat Wayne, or lead Wayne State to half 25-18. And in a junior high boys basketball score, i got to find that one too, Waltville beat Woodlawn, or Woodlawn beat Waltville tonight, 68-46. Scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. Orville has the basketball after a buck. Oh, legal screen. They're calling a legal skein on Goreville as Miller was trying to work the dribble. That foul's on Allison Webb, her third. Pick and roll, not work to perfection, too much movement. Lady Devils down nine with 540 to go in the game, Chris. It's go time for Cesar Fuller Walton. Yes, it is. Miller will bring it up across the timeline. Miller throws it left wing to Jones. Jones get past, that's going to get picked off. Picked off by Darnell. Darnell and Shadow and two on one. Shadow and tackle fouled by Miller and Kelsey Miller will foul out of the game. She'll finish with four points. Lappin fouled out. Miller has fouled out. Shadow wants to go to the line. That's the tenth on the Lady Devils. Norville will shoot two the rest of the way. Shadow wants to the line to shoot two. Thor will come in for Miller. What are the Woodlawn Warriors? 23 and 2? Really? They like four two off. 21 and 2. 20. Oh, two. Yeah, we've lost one. Maybe two. They lost to T Town and East Side the same side. So two, yeah. 20 and 2? Something and 2 going into the third. Right, I won't put it. First free throw up and in. They'll get one more. Yeah, T Town and East Side is not on everybody's schedule around here. Shadows will get one more. They, the Woodlawn, the Lady, the Woodlawn Warriors, will join 15 other teams at Rin Lake College for a Class S State tournament starting on Saturday. Shadow will hit them both for Doorville. It's 46-35. Doorville by 11. Five and a half to go. The Lady Devils will go the rest of the way without their starting guards of Lappin and Miller. They have both fouled out. Maddie Garner gets the pitch for DeMarlo at the free throw line to Garner. Right side to Jones. Jones to Marlowe at the right elbow to Pitchford. Shot from 10, up and in. Cheyenne Pitchford gets her first point of the game, 46-37. Miller comes the other way for Goreville, dribbles all the way to the left wing, still has the dribble. Comes out top of the geese, throws a right wing shadow, and she'll launch a three, it's front of the iron. Rebound to the free throw line to Jones, to Garner for the Lady Devils. Garner is fouled from behind by Haley Darnell. That's her third, team eighth, or seventh. That scoreboard is fast. Chris, you look at the lineup now for Lady Devils. Maddie Garner, Cheyenne Pittsburgh, and Bailey Jones out on the floor for Rick Metcalf. They're getting some nice minutes here in a game in a hostile environment that could prove them to be worthy next week to come off the bench to postseason play. Exactly. This is going to be invaluable for a potential postseason run, and that's going to be a top pair in regional down there for the Lady Red Devils. You know, certainly not going to be easy to get back to their home floor. They're looking at maybe a matchup with a Heron or a a Benson if they want to go anywhere. I know they have that initial matchup, I believe, it's a two-seed. It's an eight-team regional, if I'm not mistaken, or a seven-team regional. Yeah, seven-team regional there, as they will actually have Johnson City now, seven-seed. And that one. They would be a favorite in that one. And then the winner will get the winner of Benton West Frankfurt. Yep, Benton's so. beaten Frankfurt twice handily this year. So you're looking like it may be a Benton and then a Heron if you want to escape that. And Cesar Miller Waltonville beat Benton in December by like one or two at Cesar Miller Waltonville. But don't short change a Duke coin ball club. Right. Also, I have to remember that we had a text come in. The Warriors of Woodlawn are 23 and 2. So I was right the first time. You were right the first time. Garner at the line to shoot the 1 and 1. Shot. Good. See, these are the kind of points, and we've just talked about it with Garner and Jones, Pitchford. You got some players playing here in this game that are going to get some big time experience. Not only this week, next week, but their next year as well. Garner hits them both. It's 46-39. Lady Devils will press. Here comes Miller across the timeline, guarded by Williams. And the Lady Black Cats have the basketball in this seven-point lead. 
Miller to the right side. Oh, running one-hander. Nope, and no good. Trickles off the iron. And Marlowe has the rebound to garner back to Marlowe. Marlowe bringing it across. She's double-teamed. Gets it to, Matt, to Garner. Garner throws it to door on the block. double team. Door shot block. Jump ball, and it'll go to Doraville. I have to say this. With 423 to go, Chris, you have to be impressed. You got Lappin and Miller fouled out in the third and now early fourth. You got some kids out here playing their JV players for the Lady Devils, and they're doing a great job. Yeah, there's they're only a couple bounces away from having their full starting five out there, and maybe a four point Lady Devils two point going to half court here. They're going to trap. Watch this. I've seen this a time or two back in the day. Here they come. Yeah, Pitchford comes across, goes off of feet of right. Right has to go chase it back in the back court. It was tipped off of Lady Devils. Sure, right right off foot. Foot. Yeah, Shadow goes right side to Sullivan. Inside pass to Webb. Shot no good, but a foul. I think everybody thought it was going to be whistling over and back as it was dribbled off of her foot after the tip. But a big break for Gordon over there, and they have a chance to capitalize. Marlowe has fouled out. She has nine. That is the third Lady Devil player to foul out in the game. 46-39. She joins Lappin and Miller. That is Marlowe. All three have fouled out in this one. Webb will go to the line and shoot the one and one Makes them both. Actually, it's two shots now. Webb has seven off the bench. I'll tell you what, this Floorville team is deep. Yep. They have an opportunity to do some damage. And they've been able to make some free throws tonight, too. That's yep. a huge difference. Second free throw up and in. That former Devil basketball player, for Rick Metcalf, you're right in the defensive call. You know it's better than most people. Right side Garner. They'll run dribble out here this time. Dribble out. Let's side the FQ. 15-footer up off the iron. Goes outside to the right wing. Garner has the rebound. Garner gets it to pitch first. To Garner on the right wing, throws it inside, tipped away. Williams couldn't get a handle on it, stolen away by Miller. Now let, let the Devils have it back. Miller Dwarf threw it away. Here comes Miller for Gorville. Across the timeline, she goes down the lane, bump foul Williams. Williams picks up her second, and that'll send Miller to the line to shoot two. With five Jefferson County branches, a responsive quality service for all your accounts, Community First Bank would like to be the first to say, welcome back to personal banking, member FDIC. Our Facebook and Twitter accounts are being updated as we go. As Miller misses the first, you can follow us on Twitter, at 94sports, or go to our Facebook page, WMIX Sports. Free information to the public. Store schedules, updates, highlights of games, information about cranes going on. We do it all. We will show full games on there. Second free throw miss, rebounded by Williams. She'll get it up to the corner into the front court. 48-39, Goreville by 9, SQ to Garner, now left side Williams. Williams to pitch for a shot from 15 up, short, no good, rebound by Goreville. That's Pyle, she has it, and that'll be a foul. And that foul is going to be on number 40, Tasha Dore, that's her fourth. And we'll walk the other way and shoot two free throws. We're in a pile, we'll go to the line and shoot two. Mike Helton has a good team. Number one team in their regional, rated team in the state. Super sectional trip last year, which would be the Elite Eight now, and lost. They're expecting big things down here. They are. Of course, you have some battle tested teams come out of the northern edge. A couple teams get to Salem. That's a basketball fan's delight to get up there and watch that. One free throw made, 49 39. Goreville by 10. Garner throws the left side to Pitchford. Back to Garner. Right side to Eskew. Eskew in the door. SQ and Door, the only two starters left. Door spins, shot, no good. Rebound Webb. Webb will bring it up the floor. She'll stop now. She'll give it to Wright. That's the correct choice. That's Wright brings it up. Now goes down the lane, kicks the left wing to Miller. Miller comes around. Williams down the lane, running one-hander glass, no good. Webb on the rebound up, and no good. Oh, the, wave it off. I was saying it was good, but their foul was apparently on the floor, so Webb will have to earn him from the charity strike. Well... Tasha Dorr becomes the fourth Lady Devils to foul out. She had 10. That was a heck of a move to the bucket to get the rebound and the foot back by Miss Webb, though. H.C. to turn him the hard way after a great opportunity like that. 49-39. Four Lady Devils have foul out of the game. The only starter remaining on the floor is Megan Eskew. She has no fouls. Not thinking she's going to foul out. Allison Webb makes the first. Goreville will go to 24-2 on the year, 9-0 in the conference. They'll be your BDC West champions this year. As Webb makes the second, Lady Devils are going to drop to 19-5, 7-2 on the year. 
Both teams have one conference game remaining. Garner to Jones on the left wing, back to Garner. Her shot from the top of the key is good. Maddie Garner has five points in the quarter. It's 51-42. Four JV players and SQ for the Lady Devils right now. They will trap in the backcourt. Miller dribbles out. Miller has 10 second call. Williams and Jones play some good defense. JV kids earning some spots here. Would be beneficial. I mean, I know you don't want to come in here and lose, but with the two minutes and 30 seconds left and most of the JV kids out there, I mean, this added depth, especially in this hostile environment, environment will only prove to be beneficial well, next week. And I think, too, and we really need to right, stop water. Fast pause, top the hour. Let's pause the station identification on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports or crank us up on 94.1 FM WMIX. Mount Vernon, Marion, O'Fallon, a Withers Broadcasting Superstation. To expound on that point before we made ourselves legal, Chris, you got four JV kids out here playing in this environment against five starters from Doraville, four starters. This is a big thing. This is Coach Metcalf sending these kids out here. They have to play, number one, but number two, they're showing him, hey, they put us in trust us next week. Oh, exactly, and they're working hard for their opportunities. I mean, you're auditioning for spots next year with some of these seniors on this team, so why not give it everything you have and show that you can play? Garner shoots a three off the time. Now that's no good. Rebounded by Shadowin. She'll get it out to right. She'll come up the timeline. Across the timeline, left side, there she goes, running one-hander. There's no good off the mark. Webb working hard, missed the shot. Webb one more time up and in. Lady Devils have nothing for Allison Webb. That is her 12th point of the game, 53-42, the two-minute mark. Across the timeline, Adam Garner threw it to pitch, but it goes off her hands out of bounds. Remember to stay tuned for the Cesar Auto Body postgame show. We'll have scoring and stats from this one, some scoring updates from around the area, as well on the Cesar Auto Body postgame show. We'll also give you an update on our upcoming schedule this week here on WMIX. And it's a lot. Ball stolen away by Williams on the inbound. Shot no good and a foul. Williams will go line and shoot two for the Lady Devils. It'll be the third foul on Miller of Goreville. Also a score, Effingham girls beat Mount Zion tonight in Apollo Conference play. For, let's see, that score was 43-36. Williams makes the free throw. She has five after the earlier air ball in the game. She'll get one more. Second free throw also good. She's got six off the bench. 53-44. Here comes Goreville. Webb across the timeline. Stops at the insignia of the Goreville Black Cat. Throws across left side to Shadowin. Shadowin gives it off to Cavins. Now right side the pile in. Side the Cavins up, no good. Rebound Garner. Lady Devils down nine, one forty-four to go in the game. Throws it up right corner. Eskew inside the Williams spinning shot glass, no good. Rebounded by Cavins. Cavins is going to be fouled by Jones. Cavins will go to the other end and shoot two. The seniors at Goreville High School are going to have a happy senior night. They will win their final game of the regular season. Of course, they host a regional here next week. As Lady Black Cats ranked in the state, number one in their regional. Of course, that regional and a bunch of others, three others, will feed into the Gallatin County sectional. Time out on the floor as Gallatin County hosts both a boys and a girls sectional. Probably geographically not the greatest move by the IHSA. And Wayne City High School hosts a boys and girls regional. Salem gets a super of the girls of Rocky. Gallatin County is a long drive for a lot of people. I mean, Wayne... Uh, it's one thing for a school to basically have both sides of the gender with the regional, but when you're giving one school both sectionals and it is out in the middle of nowhere, closer to Indiana, I, I kind of disagree with the move there. Not that there's anything wrong with Gallatin County as a host. Fine, fine area, fine facilities, but, man, that's going to be a lot of travel on school nights for some teams from well, far away. But I, again, you have Red Hill out in the middle. Well, you got Red. you have Red Hill, you have Gallatin County, Corvo gets an inbound, and we'll get to that point here on Definitely ball. more of a debate for the Saturday Yeah, show. Gavin to Shadow on Saturday Sports Show, 808 to 10 a.m. on AM 940 and MyWithersRadio.com every Saturday. We are Shadow one. Has it fouled by Pittsburgh. So we expound on that point a little bit more. Which one? You have, have, you have the boys of the state. Yeah, boys sectionals are in 1A at Gallatin County and Red Hill. The boys 2A sectional is at El Dorado, and I'm not sure who on the other side. 
I would have to look it up. I do not know that off the top of my head as of yet. Shadow was missed the first. He'll get one more. So you got some geography to go with. Makes it interesting on that Friday night. A lot of people oh, like to go. Yeah, up in that neck of the woods. Shadow ones makes the second. Somebody text me, and I know somebody's listening that would know. 54-44. 1.15 to go in the game. Jones for a three for the Lady Devils. Hits the floor. It's rebounded by Pittsburgh. Gets back into Webb. Webb up to Miller. Miller will bring it across the timeline with a minute to go. Miller splits the double team foul. Miller will go line and shoot two free throws. While we're in that argument, I felt the record who scored the last point for Georgia. That was... Was it a one or two trip to the line for somebody? Kyle. No, I'll take it back. Shadow was had one out, too. Okay. Shadow was a one out, too, and Miller's back to the line again, and she makes the first. 55-44. It's always interesting on that section line. People like to go see those games. But, boy, some people got some travel, and they want to go see some of them. Not that that's a problem. Miller makes the second. 56-44, under a minute to go. Goreville by 12. Pitchford for a 15-footer. Front of the iron, no good. Webb on the rebound again. Webb will hold it up in the backcourt and throw it up to Cavan. Cavan sits off the key, dishes for Pyle, back out to Webb. Webb is fouled. SQ picks up a foul. Webb will go line, shoot two free throws. Delaying the inevitable other than to what the final score is. 56-44, tomorrow night. Doubleheader basketball. Chris Hugo and Jared Shaner will be on AM 940 and MyWithersRadio.com with video of the Lady Rams hosting the Annie. Senior night for them. Senior night for them as Webb hits the first. Katie Metcalf going to come in. Daisy Edmondson going to come in. And Clara Petlinski going to come in for the Lady Devils for the final 42 seconds. Tomorrow night also, Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on 94.1 FM and MyWithersRadio.com. Woodlawn travels to Cesar Valera. I, Kenny Polinski, and Mike Richardson will be there for that one. Second free throw from Webb up and in also as well, or also two as well. 58-44, 40 seconds to go. Edmondson throws right side to pitch for her three on the way, front of the iron, rebounded by Pyle. Pyle gets it up to Miller. Miller's going to make a basket, and no, she's not. She got her shot blocked by Edmondson. Rebound Webb up, and no good. Webb gets her own board, puts it up, and in. Allison Webb has had a big night underneath. Not much Lady Devils could do with her. Edmondson goes across Miller fouls. That's the fourth. Edmondson's going to shoot two free throws. Maybe one on one. Fast on the scoreboard here at Goreville. Edmondson, Daisy Edmondson will go line and shoot to one on one. Then on Wednesday night, Chris and I will head to Woodlawn as the Lady Cardinals host Hamilton County. Six fifteen start on that one. Before Thursday night, we head to Marion. Video included with Lady Rams at Marion. Edmondson hits the first. She'll get one more. Friday night, Rams are at Altoff in a South 7 game. 94.1 FM and video on MyWillsRadio.com. And on Saturday, I go to Nashville for Madison and Woodlawn at 4.30. And Chris and Jeff Lonnan will be on FM 94.1 for the Rams hosting Decatur Eisenhower at Shagnon Gymnasium. Edmondson hits both. We like Ike. Yes, 60-46. Corville bringing it across. We'll play out the string. Right throws underneath to Sullivan. Shot no good. Rebound Edmondson. Here comes Edmondson for the Lady Devils. She'll come up the right side with five seconds. Has it stolen away. She tumbles into the bleachers. Half-court shot at the horn, and time will expire. Your final score tonight, Doraville 60, Cesar Valer Waltville 46. We'll step out for a break, come back with a Cesar Auto Boys post-game show. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Hi, Roy Schmidt Chrysler dealer at King City Chrysler. It has been built with something that goes beyond the finely stitched leather. This automobile has redefined driving dynamics and an efficient V6 power plant. It has been built with hope and promise because this sedan brings with it a dose of luxury and sport that had all but left the shores. It's good to know that this kind of great is at home here, that we can show the world that the difference between good and great value is in the details. This is the 2012 Chrysler 200 imported from Detroit and ready for immediate delivery at King City Chrysler in Mount Vernon. The incentives on the 200 sedan are $3,000, R0% for 60 months, 
plus miles per gallon up to 37 on the highway. Come test drive the 200 today at King City Chrysler Center, 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois. Did your bank recently stop offering free checking? People's National Bank still has free checking with the added convenience of a Visa check card, online banking, and bill pay. Stop by People's National Bank located at 413 South 34th Street in Mount Vernon today for details on how to get your free checking back. People's National Bank, member FDIC. Visa check card and bill pay non-usage fees may apply. Long hours, inconsistent schedules, minimum wage or salary that barely keeps you above the poverty line. All you need is a better opportunity. Ren Lake College has your opportunity. The healthcare field continues to grow, and RLC can put you on the path to a great career. Openings are available in five healthcare programs health information technology, medical laboratory technology, occupational therapy assistant, surgical technology, and veterinary technology. These five programs are offered through the Southern Illinois Collegiate Common Market with general courses offered at Ren Lake College and core courses offered at the SICCM facilities in Heron. Your fast track to a great opportunity starts here. You better hurry. Applications are due by March 1st. Why wait for a great opportunity? Find out more about these programs at rlc.edu. Ren Lake College has been the vehicle to a brighter future for over 40 years. rlc.edu. Sessor Auto Body would like to take a moment to remind everyone driving to and from the game to drive safe and be alert. Sometimes events happen beyond your control. When it does, take your vehicle to the collision pros. Sessor Auto Body is pre-approved by most insurance companies throughout Southern Illinois. This allows them to get the parts ordered quicker, getting you back on the road faster and in showroom condition. Sessor Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sessor, or call 625-3523. That's 625-3523. This is the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. The Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show starts now. Welcome back to Goreville High School as the Cesar Valer Waltonville Lady Devils take one on the chin here on the road at Goreville, losing 60 to 46. This is the Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show, pre approved by most insurance companies. This means Cesar Auto Body can get your vehicle back on the road faster. Next time you have a collision, see the collision pros at Cesar Auto Body. 602 South Park and Sesser. Danny Joyce, you Chris Hugo alongside. Reminder, you can get all your updates on scores, in-game information, and the like on our Twitter account, at 94 Sports. Also, go to our Facebook page, WMIX Sports, where you can find score schedules and lots of other information as well. Also, later this evening, there will be another scoreboard update of finals from around the area, both high school boys and high school girls basketball, and then the occasional junior high basketball regional score as well. Some boys regionals were played around the area tonight. So that's on our Facebook page, WMI Exports. Check that out. And if you like it there, like us while you're there as well. We'll step out for a break, and we'll come back with scoring and stats here on the Seth Auto Body Post Game Show. This is Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Don't miss the final days of the huge winter cleanup sale at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 80% off Christmas and winter decor, 30 to 60% off clearance items, and 10 to 15% off everything else, including your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Steel, Broy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of home decor, wall decor, ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. It's the huge winter cleanup at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. When you want the best... Think the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. The Orthopedic Center has the unique distinction of being one of only two non-academic accredited orthopedic teaching and research facilities in the state of Illinois. Our goal in education is to inspire the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Patient care, education, and research are our core strengths. Located on Veterans Memorial Drive, Mount Vernon, and St. Mary's Good Samaritans in Treya Campus. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Discover the difference. A coach has Money well spent on craftsmanship that's sure to get compliments. Don't cut corners on your garage. It adds value to your home. That's why you need to see the professionals at Coach House Garages. Choose from a variety of Coach House Garage designs or they'll build one to your design. For a dealer near you, check the yellow pages in Mount Vernon or go online to coachhousegarages.com. More than just a garage. More than just a garage. It's a Coach House 
stick a reminder on your phone, jot it down on the calendar, or tie a string on your finger. Don't miss the Saturday Sports Show every week after the 8 o'clock news on AM 940 and MyWithersRadio.com. Scores, guests, content, networking, knowledge, the occasional argument, yada, yada, yada. We do it all. You might say we're a little versatile. It's the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and MyWithersRadio.com, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. For more scores and insight, follow us on Twitter at 94Sports. Now back to the showcase on WMIX. Back to Goreville High School. That is Whiskey Chris Hugo alongside the Lady Devils lose tonight on the road at Goreville, 60 to 46. This is the Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show. Sometimes things happen in automobile that are beyond your control. When they do, take your vehicle to Cesar Auto Body. They can get you on the road quicker and in showroom condition. Cesar Auto Body, 602 South Park. And Cesar, time for the scoring and set. I'll turn it over to Chris Hugo to give those. Sure, we'll take a quick look at the team stats, especially. For the Goreville Lady Black Hats in the second half, there are 5 of 21 from the inside, making them 15 of 37 for the game for 40.5 percent. From the outside, <laughs> there's always a warm January around That's here. It is. Such wildlife comes out. Go ahead. Some thunder. <laughs> All of 5 from the outside in the second half, there are 2 of 11 for the game for 18.1 percent, making them 7. Oh, man. 17 of 48. From the floor for 35.4 percent. For the Lady Devils, they were 14 of 48 for the game from the inside for 29.1 percent. They were just one of 11 from the outside. They were one of five in the fourth quarter. That's when their three ball finally fell. But one of 11 for nine percent for the Lady Devils, making them 15 of 59 from the floor for 25.4 percent. Looking at your free throws now. First for the Goreville Black Cats, 17 of 24 in the second half. They're 23 of 32 for the game for 71.8 percent. The Devils rebounded nicely in the second half, going 8 of 8 from the free throw line to make them 25 of 35 for 71.4 percent. Rebounding edge belonged to Goreville, 38 to 30. They had 24 defensive boards, 14 offensive rebounds, while the Devils had 19 defensive boards and 11 from the offensive glass. Turnover disadvantage, believe it or not, belonged to Goreville, 21 to 18. Taking a look at your scores, Sester Valier Waltonville was led by Tasha Doerr with nine. She was the only person on the team in double digits. Rachel Marlowe had nine, six points from Megan Askew, six from Michaela Williams, four from Chelsea Miller, five, all right, did I say five from Maddie Garner? You have now. Okay. Four from Chelsea Miller, I believe I already did say that as I lost my own paper here, but two apiece from Cheyenne Pitchford, Daisy Edmondson, and... Ray Lappin to give them a total of 46 points. For the Goreville Black Cats, they were led by Allison Webb's game-high 16 points. She had all 16 in the second half. Nine apiece from Allison Sullivan and Jessica Wright. Seven from Madison Cavins. Eight from Shelby Miller. Excuse me for missing that. Five from Haley Darnell and Tiffany Shadowin to give us a final score of the Goreville Lady Black Cats 60. The sets for their Waltonville Lady Red Devils 26. We need to step out for our final break. When we come back, we'll pick the Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. If your definition of local is southern Illinois and adjacent states, pay no attention to this message. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. Others advertise the message of being a local community bank. However, Community First Bank is the only local community bank exclusively serving Jefferson County with five locations and five ATMs. In short... Loans and deposits stay local and benefit you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Limited. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Goreville High School. Cesar Miller Walton to lose to the 960 to 46. You're listening to the Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show. They remind you to drive safe on the way home for the night's game. Next time you have an accident, see the collision pros at Cesar Auto Body to get back on the road faster. Cesar Auto Potty, 602 South Park in Cesar. We've come to that point in the show where we need to pick 
Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game. Mr. Hugo, and your pick is? Good question. Okay. I didn't really thought about it. All right. I mean, I knew that we had taken a break for that, and I've only been, let's see, we've only been doing this for six years now. Most she fouled out in the fourth quarter. I really think you have to give strong consideration to Tasha Doerr's 10 points. Tasha Doerr with 10 points is your Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game. Crossroads Community Hospital is more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Chris, one final thought before we wrap it up. Yeah, you know, you come down here, especially if you're the Lady Devils, hoping to pick this one up and maybe force a tie in the head-to-head battle for the BDC West. But I think the thing to take away from this, and, you know, people talk about losses and you're able to learn something from and that it's a good loss, blah, blah, blah. There's really no such thing in your heart as a good loss. But if you can take something from it and improve upon it going into this, these, these regionals next week, I think the fact that they were able to get some depth, as you said, in a hostile situation is going to pay dividends for them. Uh, when they go up against your Bettons again and, and your Herons and your Johnson Cities next week at that Heron Regional. Yep. And with that, we will wrap it up here from Goreville tonight. The Goreville Bloody Black Cats win 60 to 46 over the Sasser Valera Waltonville Lady Devils. For Jesse Clark back in the studio for Chris Hugo and Daniel Winsky saying thank you for listening and good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase, sponsored by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. The Jefferson County Basketball Showcase is also sponsored in part by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. The Collision Pros at Cesar Auto Body, Newell Furniture, and the General Store in Woodlawn, Ren Lake College. It's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu and by Coach House Garages, Ford Square, King City Chrysler. You can count on us. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. State Farm agent Scott Owens. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And People's National Bank. For inside information before, during, and after the game, follow us on Twitter at 94sports or like WMIX Sports on Facebook. We are your home for news, talk, sports, and today's hot country. WMIX, 